안녕하세요. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to train and save a model on TensorFlow and then use that model to make an Android application that we can use on our mobile device. So for our application, we want to be able to draw a Korean character on the device's screen and then have the app be able to recognize or classify what that character is. We should then be able to string together several characters to form words or sentences, which we can then send to a translating service to get the English translation. Here we use IBM's Watson Language Translator. So to start off, the code for all of this is located on GitHub at github.com slash IBM slash tensorflow dash hangul dash recognition. The link is also in the description below. Definitely feel free to look through this repository on your own to get a better grasp of the material and clone or fork it so you can try things out yourself. Now, as mentioned before, we are going to be dealing with Korean characters. Hangul, the Korean alphabet, has 19 consonant and 21 vowel letters. Combinations of these letters give a total of 11,172 possible Hangul characters. However, only a small subset of these are typically used. The top 512 most frequently used syllables account for around 99% of actually used words. For this video, we will go over generating image data using free Hangul supported fonts found online, converting images to TF records format to be used for input, and then actually training and saving the model. We will then use a saved model in a simple Android application to classify our characters, then we will connect it to the Watson language translator service so that we can translate our inputs. Let's get started by first taking care of our prerequisites. For the code in this video, a list of Python requirements is listed in the requirements.txt file. You can easily install them to your current environment with pip install r requirements.txt. This will make sure you have TensorFlow, NumPy, Pillow, and SciPy installed. Now let's move on to the data generation step. Since we need a lot of data, let's take advantage of the several free Korean fonts found online and generate our own. Provided in the tools directory of this repo is hangulimagegenerator.py. This script will use fonts found in the fonts directory to create several images for each character provided in the given labels file. So, here we choose to use a label set consisting of 2,350 frequent characters derived from KSX1001, a widely used coded character set for Korean. If we don't have a powerful machine to train on, using a smaller label set can help reduce the amount of model training time later on. So I would suggest using a smaller label set consisting of 512 common characters or even the 256 common character label set. All these label sets are provided in the labels directory of the repo. Feel free to make your own as long as each character is newline delimited. We have our labels file, now we need our fonts for the script to use. The script expects true type fonts with Korean language support. A good resource for getting Korean fonts can be found on the neighbor website as shown here. To download fonts on this website, just click on the font you would like, then keep clicking the big blue download buttons until a TTF file or a zip file containing the TTF file is actually downloaded. Once you have a good amount downloaded, make sure that they are all in the same directory. Or for simplicity, just put them in the fonts folder of the project, as that is the default location the script expects. I downloaded about 40 fonts. In this case, more is typically better, especially if you get a bunch of uniquely stylized Hangul fonts but feel free to download as many as you'd like. Now with the fonts, you can proceed with actually running the generation script. You can simply call it with the Python interpreter, python tools hangul image generator.py. You can type in dash h to see possible command line arguments, but we will be sticking with the defaults. Feel free to pass in a different labels file, fonts directory, or output directory. So depending on how many fonts and labels there are, the amount of time the script will take will vary. Once the script is done, the output directory will contain a Hangul images folder which will hold all the 64 by 64 JPEG images. The output directory will also contain a labels map CSV file which will map all the image paths to their corresponding labels. Now we have a pretty large amount of data, so next let's prepare it so we can use it with TensorFlow. The TensorFlow standard input format is TF records, which is a binary format that we can use to store raw image data in their labels in one place. A script is provided in the tools directory that will do this for us. Convert to tfrecords.py. This script will first read in all the image and label data based on the labels map CSV file that we generated earlier. Then it will partition the data so that we have a training set and also a testing set, 
with the partitioning being about 15% testing and 85% training. By default, the training set will be saved into multiple shards, in this case three, so as not to end up with one gigantic file. But this can be configured with a CLI argument, dash dash num shards train, depending on your dataset size. To run the script, just do python tools convert to tfrecords.py. You can also add a dash h here to show optional arguments you can use in case you want to deviate from the defaults. Once this script has completed, you should have sharded TF records files in the output directory TF records output or whatever directory you specified. With our TF records created, we are now ready to do actual training. In the root of the project is hangul model.py. This script will handle creating an input pipeline for reading in TF records files and producing random batches of images and labels. Next, a convolutional neural network, or CNN, is defined, and training is performed. The training process will continuously feed in batches of images and labels to the CNN to find the optimal weights and biases for correctly classifying each character. After training, the model is exported so that it can be used in our Android application. The model here is similar to the MNIST model described on the TensorFlow website. MNIST deals with classifying handwritten digits 0 through 9, so classifying Korean characters is very similar in that regard. There's just more to classify for. I encourage you to go through the Deep MNIST for Experts TensorFlow guide to help you understand what is happening in each layer of the model. Before you train the model, let's check one more thing. In the model script, there's a num train steps variable defined at the top. Increase or decrease this depending on your data size. You want to make sure you are able to train over several epochs or several complete passes through the dataset. Now let's run the model training script with Python hangulmodel.py. It will default to the 2350 character label file along with the TF records output directory to read in the TF records files. You can add dash h to see what arguments you can pass into the model in case you want to do some customization. Depending on how many images you have, this will likely take a long time to train, several hours to maybe even a day, especially if only training on a laptop. Now if you have access to NVIDIA GPUs, these will definitely help speed things up. So if you do have access, certainly install the TensorFlow version with GPU support. On my Windows desktop computer with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card, training with about 320,000 images for roughly 30 epochs at batch size 100 took just a bit over two hours. Now training this on my MacBook CPU would probably take about 20 times that. If you don't have access to a GPU or you don't have that much time, another alternative is to use a reduced label set as mentioned before. So instead of the 2350 Hangul character label set, use the 256 one or the 512 one. This helps reduce the computational complexity by quite a bit. As the script runs, you should hopefully see the printed training accuracies grow towards 1, and you should also see a respectable testing accuracy after the training has completed. When the script completes, the exported model we should use will be saved by default in the saved model directory as optimized Hangul TensorFlow.pb. Before we jump into making an Android application with our newly saved model, let's first try it out, making sure that it can classify some basic relatively clear Hangul characters. Provided is a script, classify Hangul.py, that will load your model and use it for inference on a given image. Try it out on images of your own or download some of the sample images included in the repo readme. Simply do python tools classify Hangul.py, then specify the image path of the image you want to classify. If you use a different label set besides the 2350 character one, pass it in with the argument dash dash label file. Here you can see that my model is able to classify these images pretty well. Since we know that our model is fine, it's time to use it in an Android application. A completed application has already been included in the directory hangul dash tensordroid. The easiest way to set up and use the app yourself is to use Android Studio. This will take care of a lot of the Android dependencies right inside of the IDE. After downloading and installing Android Studio, perform the following steps. First, launch Android Studio. Then, a Welcome to Android Studio window should appear. So here, click on Open an Existing Android Studio Project. If this window does not appear, then just go to File Open in the top menu. 
in the file browser, navigate to and click on the Hangul TensorJoy directory of this project, and then press OK. When Gradle builds the project for the first time, you might find that there are some dependency issues. These are easily resolvable in Android Studio by clicking on the error prompt links to install the dependencies. Let's browse the project structure here. Expand app to see Manifest, Java, Assets, and Res. The Java folder contains all the Java source code for the app. Expanding this shows that we have just four Java files. If you look in Assets, you will already find the label file and pre-trained model file. By default, the app uses a 2350 character label file along with a model I train using about 320,000 images from 40 fonts. If you want to switch out the model or labels file, simply place them in this directory. You must then specify the names of these files in mainactivity.java by simply changing the values of the constants label underscore file and model underscore file located at the top of the class. If you want to enable translation support, you must first create a Bluemix account at console.bluemix.net slash registration. You can try it out for free for 30 days. Once your account has been created, next create the Watson Language Translator service. You can do this from your Bluemix dashboard by expanding the side menu, scrolling down, and clicking on Watson. From here, click on Create Watson Service, then click on Language Translator. So right here, I use the light plan, which is free, so just click on Create, and Bluemix should initialize the service for you. When that is done, go to Service Credentials, then view your credentials, which should have been automatically created. Now, back in Android Studio, if you open up the Res folder and then the Values folder, you will see a translate underscore API.xml file. Open this and add your credentials here. You should now be ready to rebuild and run the app. To do this, just click on the green arrow button at the top of Android Studio. This should prompt the window to select deployment target. If you have an actual Android device, feel free to plug it into your computer using USB. If you do not have an Android device, you can alternatively use an emulator. In the select deployment target window, click on create new virtual device. Then just follow the wizard selecting a device definition and image. Now preferably an image with API level 21 or above. After the virtual device has been created, you can now select it when running the application. So after selecting a device, the application will automatically build, install, and then launch on the device. If all is well, you should see a functional app on your phone or emulator. Try drawing in the application to see how well the model recognizes your Hangul writing. So this pretty much wraps up this video. We went through data creation, data preparation, TensorFlow model, training and saving, and finally, model using in an application. I hope you learned a lot. I'm Paul Van Eck, and thank you for tuning in.